right, we're back. Um, and uh, we are back, right? Yes. Yes. <laughs> so I know you missed us very much. Oh yeah. Um, <laughs> this week we're gonna talk about uh, Philip Seymour Hoffman. I picked uh, Hoffman just because you know he's people have been talking about him a lot and doing yeah. retrospectives and. Uh, you know, uh, regardless of your opinion of him, I think he was one of the more interesting actors oh, working working yes. these days. So I wanted to uh, hear what Gus had to say about him and uh, and share my own thoughts. Well, when did you start on our follow? Well, I guess I wanted to start by saying I was thinking about what my favorite performance is, and I think my favorite of his performances is the first time I I noticed Hoffman, which was in a movie called Almost Famous. Have you seen okay, it? Yes, the Cameron Crowe yes, movie. Yes. And it's really a movie that, when I think about it, it hit me at the perfect time. I think I was 13, 14 when I saw it. And it's about a kid mm-hmm. that's, you know, 15 or 16 who wants to be a writer. And he, you know, and he goes off and he does it. And that mm-hmm. was like hitting me at the, it's just one of those movies that hits yeah, you at yeah, the right. perfect yeah. time in your life. And uh, Hoffman plays, uh, uh, he plays a real true life character, Lester Bangs, who is a, uh, who ran a magazine, an editor of a magazine. And. I just remember I'd never seen his face before to, to my knowledge in a film. And when I saw that, it just, I said, who is this guy? Because he stole every scene, scene he that he in, was yeah. in. And uh, and I still remember, that's one of those movies where I still remember dialogue that he says in the movie. He says at some point, like, the kid is breaking down and, you know, he's he's sitting there on the phone with the kid. And he, he says, you know... Like, well, well, the girls will never like us. We're the uncool. We're, you know, and I still, that still echoes in my mind every once in a while. So that's, that's still, I still have a lot of affection for that. So I'll start there. So, but uh, in the overall arc of his career, mm-hmm. uh, when did you talk about that a little bit? Then I just. Well, I was going yeah, through, I was going through the filmography and I, I, I do think that even though he carried movies, I don't know what you think about this, as a lead. Mm-hmm. Like I know you, uh, you're going to talk about owning Mahoney, and he's a Somewhat, yes. he's a great lead mm-hmm. in that, yes. and that's I think it's probably his best performance is owning mm-hmm. Mahoney, um, but I think he was most interesting as a character actor, as a supporting actor, because I think about movies like Talented Mr. Ripley mm-hmm. and films where he wasn't the main, he wasn't center stage, or even something like Moneyball where he plays the the, the mm-hmm. manager right. or uh, Ides of March where he plays uh, he plays I think another like a campaign manager so I think he was most interesting in that and in the uh, the Paul Thomas Anderson stuff did you ever see the master yes I did what yes. did you think yes. of his oh, performance, I, I liked his in performance that? a lot it was really interesting uh, it's interesting that. you say that about a character thing because you know after you mentioned that you wanted to do him I looked him up you know, yeah read stuff about him and one of the interesting things he said is he said even when I get a lead, it evo- devolves into being a character. Right. Um, I, I'm a character actor playing the lead. Uh, what that really did was it led me to thinking and meditating a little bit about um, what we consider leads, okay? okay? Mm-hmm. And um, how that even evolved, because it really comes from the romantic notion from the Victorian novel that um, a principal character, a hero, a romantic hero, nice. as it were, has to be tall, handsome, swashbuckling mm-hmm. in a certain mm-hmm. kind of way. When you look around in real life, that isn't so. Mm. Um, romantic men are sometimes are very short, sometimes are stubby, whatever. The movies yeah. picked up on that, and the movies has carried that tradition forward. Mm-hmm. But every so often you get an actor who doesn't fit in that mold that breaks you out. Right. Yeah. He is one. Spencer Tracy was another. Mm-hmm. Um, Edward G. Robinson was another. So was um, Rod Steiger. Uh, they were essentially character actors who carried leads, yeah. really, and made us, for the, the duration of that picture, um, reassess what we considered the leading man yeah, that's very format. Yeah. And so he did that very, very well. Mm-hmm. And, you know, when you talk about, we talk about his, our favorite performances, um, he got the Academy Award for Capote. Yeah. And that, to me, wasn't, I wasn't that excited about it because the nature of Capote meant he had to give what, to my mind, was a mannered performance uh, because Capote himself was a mannered persona. And so... An actor 
superimposing himself over that um, virtually doubles the mannerisms. And th that just wasn't attractive or interesting to me. Well, I, plus, we both, yeah. I think we both agree that, you know, there were two Capote yes. movies that year, and the other right. one that didn't get hardly any attention yes. was Infamous right, with, with Toby, Toby Jones. Jones. Yes. And he, of the two performances, I think Toby Jones he fitted it more. Yeah, yeah, I thought he, he fitted the role better. Yeah. But what you were talking about, things like Boogie Nights mm. and films like yeah. that, um, Hoffman always stood out. I mean, he always, as you say, um, drew attention to himself, but not in the showy way. As a matter of fact, one of the interesting things about uh, owning Mahoney is how recessed as a character and an actor he is in the role. Yeah. Nevertheless, he carries the film forward. Yes, yeah, and agree. that's yeah, he's not a very difficult thing to do mm -hmm. as an actor. Most leading mm -hmm. roles require some narcissism from the actor, the leading actor's perspective. The camera just has to stay on him for that, but he kind of drew back into that. And in doing that, he really, to me, because that's a, based on a real-life character, mm -hmm. um, made me believe exactly what that guy was able to do yeah. and what he was able to do that character uh, the, the character's name is a, is similar to Mahoney but it's slightly different because of I guess legal uh, yeah, the real ramifications person, yeah, yeah. Um, the real person was you know if anybody hasn't seen that film and it's to my mind the best film about gambling I've ever seen yeah most people and, haven't yeah. seen that film so. um, he perpetrated the largest fraud ever done in Canada. Ten million dollars this guy defrauded a bank yeah. and spent it all on gambling. Yeah. You know? But seeing Seymour Hoffman's performance in the role, you and as I said, that reticent withdrawal that he has in it, you understand why that Mahoney or Maloney character could do that because nobody's watching him yeah. and nobody's paying much attention. Yeah. There are scenes where he's at corporate meetings and he's virtually invisible at the meetings. When they even point him and ask him for his opinion, he will just say something in the affirmative that gets them to move on past him which subsequently nobody's looking at him and he's taking all the money. It's mm -hmm. really fascinating mm -hmm. to watch him play the role so, so well. Plus the romantic aspect of it as well. Um, it balances wonderfully. Yeah. yeah. And so that to me is my favorite uh, performance. But he did so many others. He also, one of the things I like was that he also directed and acted. And he said something that was interesting. He only directed really one movie. Yeah. And then he was preparing to direct a second. Another one, yeah. And But he directed several times on stage. Oh, he I had that, that small company. And um, one of the plays that he did, I didn't see it, but I saw the reviews on it, was a play called Jesus Jumped the A-Train. And um, after directing somewhat, because we are a society of specialization, and we tend to categorize people. Mm -hmm. um, in movies now, it's become kind of common for an actor to direct at least one and then go back to acting. So subsequently, um, when somebody really does it more than once, we're surprised at that. And so he would fluctuate back and forth. He would do a movie, he'd go back off of Broadway and he'd direct. And finally they asked him about it. And one of his comments, which I think is a terrific comment, he said, you know, being a director makes me a better actor. Mm. And he says, being an actor makes me a better director. Yeah, I like that. So it was you know, yeah. an inverse kind of thing. Which and yeah, you see it sense. in his performances because he balances his performances so well. And one of the things that I've always appreciated about him as an actor is that he has a very good sense of ensemble. And that is something that yeah. is not easy because of career motivations is easy for actors to do. And that is, it's like being, you know, with a, a, a jazz combo, a, a yeah. musical combo. You hear what the other person is doing and you pick up from that, you complement it, right. you extend it, but you don't 
superimpose yourself over it. Yeah, you don't get yes. the sense that he was a very selfish actor. Not at but all. He was very giving. And, yes. you know. and I think so. a lot of that came from being a director as well. Yeah. Because as a director, you always want to smooth things out. You want to make everybody equal on the stage. You, know, you don't That's want people true. going away saying, oh, that actor was better than this actor. Yeah. You want them to feel that like they're all involved in this situation, the dramatic situation. Of yeah. The comic situation, which is, you know, standing for life in a certain way. And in life, we don't say that. You know what I'm saying? We don't say, well, he didn't play his part right and she didn't. Because we believe what everybody says, because <laughs> exactly. they are just going through living. And so he gets, as an actor, he does that very well. And that's mm -hmm. something I always look for, particularly on screen, where the actor is really in tune with his fellow actors. Yeah. And, of course, as a director, you probably have found that where that's one of the major tasks that you confront is sometimes you get an actor who's here and an actor who's here oh, yeah. and an actor who's here and you try to make them all here, yeah. you know, like that. And so you're pleased when you get an actor who will just get a sense of the mise en scene or what's the ensemble and say, oh, this is where I fit. This is where I'll hit my notes. Exactly. Yeah. Well, I get nice. the sense that it, this is just all guessing work, but I mm -hmm. get the sense he probably was the kind of actor you wanted to have on set that would also bring an ensemble to... He would help you find the balance between the uh -huh. actors. I don't you know, know his that's work. Just, that's yeah. just guessing. Yeah, I don't know his work habits at all, but um, as I said, looking at several of the films that, you know, yeah. some of the ones you mentioned yeah. and stuff like that. The talented Mr. Ripley. Yeah. I mean, oh, he was very well cast in yes. that role, too. Um, and so well, I recently was watching, you know, I was in Mississippi with my grandfather, and we put on that Paul Newman movie, Nobody's Fool. Mm -hmm. And oh, that yes. must have been yes. one of his first roles. But right. again, it is one he of stands roles. out yes. so much, and he plays, he plays the twerp. The, the you know so well too uh, not the, the twerp might not be the, the best no but it's a but, yeah. yeah exactly okay. and it's just so funny that like to see him in that or I was listening to the audio commentary for uh, Paul Thomas Anderson's first movie who worked with mm -hmm. him yes. four or five times I, I think and mm -hmm. he cast him and I, he was just saying like this is a guy that you know the very first time he worked with him he came in and he just like kind of let him let him loose and, mm -hmm. and just let him do whatever he wanted to and he was never disappointed after that so it's interesting so well that's what a good director a smart director will do with a good with actor. the right actor yes with the right actor you yeah. just let them go because if you don't then you're in some way containing yeah the richness yeah that they have to offer yeah yeah like that some actors spill over and then you have to contain yeah, it yeah but when you get an actor like that who is so attuned to what's going on the role i wish i'd seen him in because uh, i've seen so many other actors play it and he got wonderful reviews for it on stage is death of a salesman oh really yeah, he played, I did not know oh, he yes. played that. yeah he played really low man he was nominated for the tony award for it but he didn't get uh, it. no um but that would uh, they very, said that's very interesting. Um, what's his name? Um, Mike Nichols directed it. Okay. And the um, reviews were very, very positive huh. for him. And he seems to me, uh, of all the Willie Lomans that I've seen, maybe fifteen of them, you know, and variety of things, he seems to me of this name actors, mm. one of the most happily cast. In that particular role. Yeah, it seems yeah. to fit for sure. Um, he also did Long Day's Journey Into Night. Yeah, no. I mean, he would just go between stage, screen, and television as yeah. well. And because he, he did Law and Order. Yeah, yeah, and he was prolific show. as yeah. a film actor. I mean, yes. looking at his... I, I would say, looking at his you know, filmography again... For the small I still time, haven't. Yeah. I still haven't seen... A, a good yeah. a good amount of his pictures. I didn't see that one he did with Laura Linney, The Savages, which I mm -hmm. heard was good. And he's still got a few that are then, coming out. Yes, he's got like, I think two, isn't he? Yeah. yeah. And then he did with David Mamet, um, State and Maine. Yeah, yeah, which is good, yeah. Uh, he did so many. And that yeah. let, you were talking about ensemble, the one that I skipped, but now I'm really curious about is the one he did with, uh, I think Walken is in it, uh, a, a late quartet. Yeah, was, I was the one that, that came yes, out last year. Yes, but again, yes, it sounds like it'd be that, interesting yes. just to watch how they all mm -hmm. fit as an ensemble. But uh, anyway, he was uh, he was an interesting actor, and uh, and somebody that if 
you know, people looking at this thing were, are interested in watching really good act and a good actor work or good actors in general. Uh, he is one, you know, every so often, you know, there's always that feeling that we don't have that many good actors. You know, we have stars, yeah. but we don't have that many good actors. Which is not true. Um, we are rich in actors, you know, and frequently they are so good we don't really think of them acting. Right. You know, yeah. we just expect they show up, they do a good job, and they go, and we yeah. think, oh, well, you know, that's par for the course. But, uh, no, they do really work hard, and uh, when you get a special talent like this, which unfortunately was cut short, because I was looking toward, you know, a lot more years yeah. of um, his contribution to cinema. Yes. Uh, both as an actor and later as a director. Right. You know, like that. And so I was thoroughly surprised, uh, saddened, shocked as well when um, I read. And I didn't read about it. I was away. And so I didn't read about it until a week later. Yeah. And uh, then I saw it and I was, oh my goodness. No, it's yeah, definitely one of those that when someone yeah. told me or when I saw it pop up on the news feed, I just, I was like, I couldn't believe it. Yeah, yeah. So. And, but, um, yes, he is somebody that we wanted to appreciate. And so, yeah. you know, um, good job wherever you are. Yeah. We loved what you did and we wish you were here doing it some more. And even if you didn't, yeah, even if it got cut short, he still left an incredible... Oh, he left a nice little... That won't be forgotten. As you say, he did so many films yeah. in that short period of time. That's the wonderfulness of film. I was talking to somebody the other day about it, saying that um, one of the wonderfulness of film is that we can talk about that, but the films exist. Mm -hmm. um, you know, versus stage, which has its own um, merits, but you talk about a wonderful actor on stage... And people have to take your word for it if yeah. they didn't witness that performance. Exactly. Um, we could talk about Philip Seymour Hoffman's work years from now, and people can go back Absolutely. and look at it and say, oh, I see what those guys were talking about. Or they could disagree, mm -hmm. too. But the work is there. <laughs> and that's the wonderful thing about film, which is one of the reasons why I like it so much. Yeah, yeah. I agree. So who are we doing next? What actor are we doing next? Well, you know, we talked about, um, we could skip an actor, perhaps. Okay. And we talked about, and it's a subject that fascinated me, is doing films um, of Hollywood about Hollywood. Okay. We, we or films, films about films. About, films yeah, about films filmmaking. Of, yeah, filmmaking. Okay. And um, I, I really thought that was an interesting stuff. And then we could go back to acting. Okay. So yeah. we'll take a break. Yeah. And uh, uh, we'll break the rules a little bit. Because, mm -hmm. you know, we're, we're rule breakers here. Um, and uh, we'll talk about films about films next time. Okay. And once again, I want to thank everybody because people have been sending responses. Yeah. And really, thanks. I'm so happy to know people actually listen to this. This is great. That's yeah. Cool. It makes me want to do it more. Uh, so thank you. Definitely. Thank you for your responses. We'll see you soon. Okay.